All right, so this is a segment number dos, number two, on high risk relationship for divorce or high divorce, whatever. Different couples, different relationship with couples. So now we'll bring us to number four, the destructive ones. Oh boy, those chevre, they do a good job. These are the couples that always seek vengeance on one another. They always try to see each other. Who is the boss? I'm a boss! Right? Everybody is a boss. I don't want to tell you about the story, you know, about this couple. Remember? I told you the couple, they came the next day to the rabbi to divorce. Why? Because her mother told her that under the chuppah, she should put her foot on the guy so she'll be the boss. His mother told her the same thing. Under the chuppah, they were fighting with their feet. Next morning, they came to the rabbi to divorce. I couldn't believe that. They weren't even married 24 hours. Vengeance. I'm going to show you who the boss. You did this to me. I'll show you. Not now, but I'll show you. Okay? For example, let's say <coughs> she decided, the girl decided that we are not going to your family this, this, this time. Your family is making some kind of a gather. We're not going. Okay. Santa, you know, we don't want to go to my family. Not a problem. I'll decide it from this point and on not to ever go to your family. You do it to me, I'll do it to you. By the way, a mafia here. Always like that. All the time, all the time. Couple like this are busy, <coughs> quote unquote, re educating the other one. You show it to me, I show it to you. Say hello to my little friend, you know. That's so always good for Al, Ca Al Capone, I don't know, Al Pacino, you know, Al Cappuccino, whatever his name is, right? This is not how couples react. You did it to me, I'll do it to you. You don't want to do this, fine, I'll show you, I won't give you that. You don't want to do this, I'll punish you, I won't give you money. You won't do this, I won't do this, you know, I won't <coughs> with you. <coughs> you don't want with me, I'll go with someone else. That's how it works. Vengeance. Vengeance, destructive. Everybody is there, but it's like a ping pong, you know? Everybody's got to say the last word. Maybe you should have the last, the last dance, but not the last word. But you think you're going to finish the conversation whenever you want? I'll show you, no. I'll tell you, no, I'll tell you. Never, 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 never willing to say, okay, what are we doing here? What are we doing in this relationship? This is going to go down the drain. He does not make a difference like Tamut Nafshim Plishti, I should die with the Philistines. Ta Shim Shon. I don't care what happens as long as he would understand what I'm trying to tell you. She would understand what I'm trying to tell her. They don't care if their relationship will, will erupt. Will, they, they, they go like two, the two goats into each other's head all the time. Instead of trying to solve the problem, <coughs> excuse me, or trying to compromise, or trying to understand what they're doing. No, they're going to, uh, me? Compromise? Oh, oh, oh. That's not, that's not in, my le in my dictionary. Compromise. If anybody needs to compromise, it's you, not me. Destructive. Destructive. I've seen it, unfortunately, many times. Uh, I'll teach him a lesson. Uh, with this, I'll teach her a lesson. From that it goes right away. It's, it's completely, this is like a, like a, a fire of gasoline. Poof, it will erupt like this. It's extremely devastating. These are the destructive people. It's a destructive relationship. You did this to me, I'll teach you a lesson. It's okay, not now, I'll wait. This is no way to have relationships. And then a person like this, should not be allowed to be in a relationship. You know, you could, you, we're not doing scores here. Oh, you got me? Wait, wait, wait until I get you now. You wait, you wait and see. 
You got me, I'll get you. If you're dating girls like that, run like you're running from the plague. Run! Or guys like that. Run. If you, something happens, okay, you know what? You got me. Fine, you got me. Laugh about it. But if the person says, okay, you got me, now you wait, this is your indication to run away. <clears throat> or you should realize that if you are already married or in a relationship, and you are the person who has this tendency, you should realize that you are the one who is destroying the relationship. But many times it takes two to tango. It takes two people like that. Usually it's like that. Now, number five. <laughs> That's the, that's the juicy stuff. <clears throat> These are, I would hate to say that this is only for the firm world, but unfortunately, it became an epidemic as well. And yeah, maybe not in the yeshivish world and so on and so forth. But uh, I hear more and more things that I don't want to hear. But anyway, that's the couple who have great sex, but nothing else. I don't understand. I really don't understand. And I'm not being a, an imbecile. I don't understand how you can call yourself a religious person and have a premarital sex. I, I just don't understand that. I don't understand it. It's simple as that. I don't know. Just. But anyway, there are couples who got married. And for whatever reason, sex is amazing, but there's nothing else besides that. So there are couples who could have tremendous desire for each other, beautiful, intimate relationship, but there's nothing more beyond that. Therefore, when the relationship is based on physical issues, or physical matters only or mainly, <clears throat> without an emotional depth, and emotional depth is the number one necessity in the relationship, not your physical part. It's very difficult for this relationship to last for a long time. That's why, <clears throat> therefore, if you're not only if you're religious, even if you're not religious, if you have a premarital sex, you're basically dooming your relationship to a failure. But that's I'll explain to you some other time. Now we're going to come to... the sixth couple, sixth couple but which is a very touchy subject in certain communities is the age gap <clears throat> couples where their age gap is too big too great in the beginning might be nice might be exciting might be passionate Something new. And later on, this kind of a relationship becomes problematic. People around you would look at you like, huh? Not always you're going to have a common denominator with the friends of your spouse. Different uh, interests because of age. For example, <clears throat> what I was interested in, let's say, 30, is different than what I was interested in when I was 37. Or what my wife was interested in 30, it was different when she was interested in 37. Imagine we had seven years apart. We had nothing together. And again, the notion that a guy should marry a girl much younger than him is very primitive. We don't live in Saudi Arabia. That's it. And uh, yeah, recently I spoke to a guy, he's like, I don't know, whatever, in his uh, late 40s. He wants to marry a girl who's like 32. I said, what are you, out of your mind? First of all, who would marry you? Look at you. Why should anybody marry you? Marry somebody appropriate to your age. Marry somebody appropriate to your age. 
And I do believe that having kids so late in life is a crime against the kid. It's not fair. And I don't care what your grandfather did or your father did or whatever. I don't care. I think it's bad. <coughs> Sorry. If you have, you're going to be 50 years old and you're having a child, when you're going to walk with your kid to first grade, they're going to tell the kid, who's this grandpa? Hello, grandpa. Sorry. To have such a big gap is a recipe for disaster. Marry somebody your age. I think give and take two years is, is max. And in certain ages, even that is too much. Even that is too much. In certain ages. Well, let's say you're 25. She could be 26. She could be 24. So, with all the excitement, with all the breaking the taboos and so on and so forth, it's very nice. But at the end of the day, you got to live with it and you're not going to live with it a long time. And that will be a recipe for disaster. Marry somebody your age, that your development will go hand in hand. You'll be able to go hand in hand. That not one would shadow the other. Everybody wants to go out with a cougar, Right? But guess what? You're not panthers altogether. You're a bunch of pussycats. So you're going to go with, let's say you're 21 year old, you're going to go with a 27 year old. So I can handle a 27 for crying out loud, I can handle a 37. I know you can also handle an 87. But that's what you want to live with? Think about that. Right? You're going to be 30, she's going to be 36. You're going to be 40, she's going to be close to 50. Or the other way around. Men that marry women that are much younger than them are very insecure men. They want an assurance that they're still young and so on and so forth. Listen, my eyes are the same eyes that I was 20 years old. But I need to remind myself of the mirror in the image, that it's me, it's not somebody else. It's not a 20 year old. Okay? You gotta look around you. So don't marry somebody too much older than you, or too younger, too much younger than you. Somebody your age, give and take, plus minus as they say. Plus minus a year, it's, it's, it's okay, it's healthy. It's more or less within the same thing. Think about it that way. I mean, recently I saw a guy who married a girl who was, he's divorced, who married a girl who's five years younger than his daughter, older than his daughter. Yeah, he's got money. Five years older than his daughter. Basically, they, they could be classmates almost. They were both in high school when they were, you know. Think about that. It's crazy, isn't it? That's a recipe for a disaster. We don't live in a society that, is, uh, that shares values of, uh, of Islamic uh, customs in, in the 1800s. We live in the 21st century. And we live in America, or we live in Israel, or we live whatever, but we live, in, we live here in this modern society. You can't have it both ways, Habibi. You want to go back to that kind of customs? Okay, let's talk about it. Let's, let's strip you out from everything that you have American going for you. <coughs> you don't live in Uzbekistan, not in Turkmenistan, not in Afghanistan, and not in Lunistan. You live in America. And you grew up in America? And you could see, think about it this way. When you were 20 years old, let's say the girl, let's say you have 10 years difference. 20 years old, she was 10 years old. If I'm going to introduce you now to a 10-year-old girl, 
Allah said to you, listen, say hello to your wife. He says, what are you, crazy? What, do you think I'm a pedophile? But when you're 30, you're going to look at a 20-year-old. What's the matter with you? Look at it this way. Or you want somebody who was, uh, you know, almost as, as old as your mother, right? I think you should go to therapy instead of getting married. Have a great day.